This is D, and let's stress for life. That's what's up. At the gate, out the gate, from the start, I just want to tell you that this is not a video that's telling black folk to go kill other folk or South Africans to go kill other folk. That's not what this video is about. But this is about black folk. And sadly, South Africans are killing Africans from other regions and other countries of the continent. They're complaining that the, these fellow Africans are taking their jobs, taking their lands, and taking opportunities away from them, as well as selling drugs, doing all kinds of, of terrible things. But Julius Malema challenged them, saying that the Chinese do the exact same things, if not worse. The Indians, the East Indians, do the exact same things, and even worse. The Europeans do the exact same things and far worse. But these South Africans say nothing and do nothing against the Chinese. Say nothing and do nothing against the Indians. Say nothing and do nothing against the Europeans. It's only against their fellow Africans that they make this stink. It's only against their fellow Africans that they, that they raise up in arms. And this made me think. There's a phrase that I heard years ago. It said, as America goes, so goes the world. These South Africans have been manifesting racial self-hatred. Do we as African Americans manifest racial self-hatred? Of course we do. Think about, think about the way we love and respect and appreciate everyone and every group except our own. In recent times, it's even gotten worse. What is it that we're doing? We're dividing amongst each other on skin tone. The lighter tone brothers and sisters are said to be house Negroes, agents that they ain't on code. And one of the worst things that we can ever do is forget our history. One of, the, one of the equally horrible things that we can do is to allow the dominant group to write our narrative. We have to realize that African is African is African. We've lived that way. And most certainly, black is black is black. I mean, come on, even white folk know that. <laughs> Think about President Obama. You had, you had a lot of white folk who were saying, oh, we have our first black president. And why were they saying that? Because they wanted to convince black folk that we were beyond race. They wanted to convince the world that America is beyond the issue of race. And of course, they were quick to say President Obama was black when he did something that they didn't like. <laughs> That's just the reality. Tiger Woods, you pull up his Jupiter, Florida police report. And what you're going to see is that, let me, let me, let me get this right. That he was a dark complexioned black male. They know black is black is black. We're the ones who don't know that black is black is black. And with all this hatred, with all this hostility in the world that's coming against us, do we really need to be turning against each other? With all this hostility, with all this hatred that there is in the world against us, do we really need to be turning against our brothers and sisters who have been all in on the struggle with us? You have these individuals that I'm about to read to you. And when you hear their names, I want you to think of three things. Number one, all of them were about the struggle. Number two, all of them were lighter than a brown paper bag. And number three, all of them contributed mightily to our diversity of thought, to our strength for everyone every shade, every stripe, every type in the black community. But before I hit you with their names, I encourage you to like, subscribe, comment, share, 
Also, click the notification bell so you can be notified of our next video. And of course, go to www.destressmethod.com for more resource information. Now, back to these brown paper bag Negroes. These brown paper bag Negroes who have empowered black America in various ways. Crispus Attucks. He was the first martyr of the American War for Independence. Frederick Douglass, a runaway slave, just wasn't content on being a runaway slave, but he became an ardent proponent of black freedom and black empowerment. Booker T. Washington, he encouraged black folk to be autonomous encouraged them to get trades and was even a, one of the founders of Tuskegee Institute, Tuskegee University. Dr. Neely Fuller, he's helping black America better understand the system of white supremacy and there's so many other names. Rosa Parks, Eartha Kitt, Lena Horne, Duke Ellington, Harry Belafonte, Dorothy Dandridge, Sinbad, Richard Wright, Langston Hughes, Joy DeGruy, Angela Davis, Michelle Young, Arthur Ashe, Naomi Osaka, Colin Kaepernick, Colin Powell, Adam Clayton Powell, Thurgood Marshall, <gasps> Charles Drew, Louise Little, and of course, Malcolm X. I am pretty certain that Julius Malema agrees with Marcus Mosiah's quote that said, the black skin is not a badge of shame, but rather a glorious symbol of national greatness. Whether you're from Nigeria or Ghana, whether you're from Lesotho or Burkina Faso, whether you're from Zimbabwe or Cape Verde, Africans are Africans are Africans. My brother, my sister, your skin, your beautiful black skin, whether it is pale white, toast tan, berry black, pancake brown, or banana yellow, is a symbol of our collective greatness. Know it, live it, and share it. Well, that's all we got for now. This is D, and let's stress for life. That's what's up.